<clears throat> Good afternoon. I am Council Member Joe Borelli, and I'm Chair of the Committee on Fire and Emergency Management. I am joined today by my colleague, uh, Council Member Mark Traeger, whose bill we are about to hear. Although the Committee on Fire and Management primarily oversees the New York City Fire Department and the City's Emergency Medical Services, the Committee also oversees the Office of Emergency Management, which is responsible for coordinating New York City's emergency planning and, and response for all types of scales and emergencies. They also have really sweet hats. Regarding the subject of today's oversight hearing, we're here to discuss the City's Emergency Management Strategic Plan for 2017 to 2021. I'll ask the first Deputy Commissioner to present the details of the Department's plan, but generally speaking, the plan is focused on four main goals, including promoting the, the coordination, responsibility, and strengthening agency identity, reinforcing the City's capacity to manage emergencies through a strategic engagement, developing innovative solutions to support OEM's expanding responsibilities, and advancing the profession of emergency management. OEM is a, in a unique position to positively impact the lives of New Yorkers uh, and those that visit our great city by helping in enhance public safety. I'm encouraged that OEM has undertaken a comprehensive review of its operations and has identified and addressed internal changes. The committee is particularly interested in the overall nature of how the city's numerous agencies communicate, plan, coordinate with each other during large-scale emergencies. Uh, the committee will also hear testimony on intro 563 sponsored by council member mark traeger which seeks to amend this new york city fire code in relation to the posting of hurricane evacuation zone and evacuation center information in multiple dwelling buildings i believe council member traeger has a prepared statement and i will uh, ask him to say it now thank you mr chairman uh, Good afternoon. I'm Councilmember Mark Traeger, and I'm uh, pleased that at today's Committee on Fire and Emergency Management, uh, chaired by Councilmember Joe Borelli, that we're hearing my bill, Introduction 562, a local law to amend the New York City Fire Code in relation to, uh, to the posting of hurricane evacuation zone and evacuation center information in multiple dwellings. This is actually a bill I introduced in the last uh, term in the Council and reintroduced in, in, this, in this term. Uh, I want to thank Chair Borelli for holding this important oversight hearing uh, on New York City's emergency management uh, plan and for hearing uh, my bill. As many of us know, it has been almost exactly six years since Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy devastated uh, so many of our communities throughout the entire city. There are families in my district who are still recovering from the storm, and I'm sure that unfortunately this rings true for a lot of people. Our city needs to do everything possible to make sure that we are sufficiently prepared for the next storm because it is not a matter of if there's a next storm, but rather when there's a next storm. People are still struggling. We need to make sure that everyone has access to the information they need to know. My bill would require the owners of multiple <coughs> dwellings, group uh, R2 occupancy, to post notice in a common area or in additional areas as required by the fire commissioner stating the hurricane evacuation zone number for that building and providing the addresses of the three nearest evacuation centers. The form of the notice would be determined by the commissioner. Our city should do whatever we can to make sure that all New Yorkers are informed so they can be prepared. And I'll just make a quick uh, addition. Uh, there are areas of our city with significant number of high-rise buildings. Uh, that is unique to other parts of the country. And during and after Sandy, we had great difficulty assisting families in those high-rise buildings. So I think that we need to double down with the amount of su support, information, and preparation for families who live in these multiple dwellings in these high-rise buildings to give them as much information as possible in advance as far as possible. I, st I still think we still have a lot more work to do in addition to this bill, uh, but I think clearly during and after Sandy, areas in my district in high-rise buildings, there was great difficulty, and the city acknowledged it. The Red Cross acknowledged it, and others did. So I think as much as we can do to provide as much information as possible, and there have been tweaks uh, to New York City's emergency management's plan since Sandy, uh, we have to make sure that those tweaks filter down to the people who need to know the most. So this information, I think, is, is just critical 
to pass along to families in the most vulnerable parts of our city. Again, I thank the chair for giving me the time uh, today and for hearing this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you, and I'll note we're joined by Council Member Brannon. Uh, I'll now ask the members of the administration, who I think there's only one, uh, to please state your name for the record, raise your right hand, uh, as the committee council will administer the oath. Uh, do you firm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the committee and answer honestly to council member questions? I do. Good afternoon, Chairperson Borelli and members of the committee. I am Calvin Drayden, first deputy commissioner at the New York City Emergency Management Department. I am pleased to be here to provide information on the agency's strategic plan as well as to discuss intro 562. The New York City Emergency Management Strategic Plan 2017 through 2021 directs our growth and focus through 2021. It is designed to help align and ensure coordination across divisions, guide decision making and resource allocation, and communicate the roles and responsibility of the agency. A strategic planning process team was formed in August 2015 to design and drive the planning and implementation process that engaged all staff to analyze strengths weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges to the agency. The information was then distilled into goals and objectives and released in October 2016. All members of our staff were actively engaged in planning out the plan through various brown bags, surveys, forums, focus groups, and other activities, including the many revisions and edits that the plan went through before it was released. These are the four goals in the strategic plan. Number one, Promote coordination, responsibility, and strengthen agency identity. Here, we enhance our, our role in citywide coordination, mitigation, planning, response, and recovery. Goal number two, re reinforce the city's capacity to manage emergencies through strategic engagement. This goal continues to build our relationships with local, state, and federal agencies, as well as with elected officials, nonprofits, and the private sector. This goal also includes con continued planning and preparedness efforts for the people with disabilities and others with access and functional needs. Number three, develop innovative solutions to support NISM's expanding responsibilities. We are growing fast and we are in, in here we focus on expanding our capabilities through improvements in technology, infrastructure, and staffing. This will enhance our scalability to respond to incidents while maintaining continuity of daily operations. And finally, number four, advance the profession of emergency management. We are the premier emergency management agency in the country, and we strive to maintain and grow this through our cadre of professional staff who represent us at nationwide conferences, who are asked to speak to international delegations, who consistently promote a culture of learning inside and outside of the agency. Woven throughout all the four goals is our engagement with people we serve. Each year there are thousands of interactions with our staff and those living and working in the city. Our focus on community engagement and community preparedness are one and the same. An informed constituency is a prepared constituency. We continue to push this message through our many programs such as the Ready New York and Know Your, Your Zone campaign, which encourages New Yorkers to know which hurricane evacuation zone they live in and what that means for them. Notify NYC, the city's free emergency notification system, which has grown significantly from 140,000 subscribers before Hurricane Sandy to now almost 745,000 subscribers, with common notifications available in 13 languages, American Sign Language, and audio formats, and a multiple application, mobile application that has seen more than 77,000 downgrades, downloads in the one year. The Syria Space Program, which identifies spaces and communities that could potentially support the city's emergency recovery operations or used for community outreach events. The Community Emergency Planning in New York City Toolkit, an interactive workbook designed to guide communities through developing their own emergency plans. Not only does it provide the hazards these communities may face, from hurricanes to utility disruptions to steam pipe explosions. It also outlines the key, res key response roles communities can play to protect, protect their residents and organizations. Our continued push for strong community outreach and engagement activities grows as you have likely seen in your neighborhood, 
in, our, in, in your neighborhood at meetings, town halls, fairs, mobile office hours, and, off, and other community events. In addition, we work closely with elected officials on outreach and engagement activities and have just hosted a training for city council members and their staff in cooperation with the speaker's office and Chairman Borelli. New York City Emergency Management is still a, a young agency by New York standards, yet the critical role we play for those living and working in the city has never been more apparent. From coastal storms to building collapses to power outages, the complexity of our city combined with our diverse population creates a need for a strong, smart emergency management agency. To continue our success, we must plan accordingly. We're working diligently towards implementing the components of our four goals into our existing resources and planning procedures with the assistance of the entire agency, focusing, fostering inclusion and ensuring every voice is heard. Now let me speak to you regarding Intro 562, which requires owners of specific occupancies located within a hurricane evacuation zone to post a notice in their building providing the hurricane evacuation zone number and the three closest hurricane evacuation centers. As you know, New York City Emergency Management is not an oversight agency, but we are also always supportive of more information being provided to the public in any capacity. It is important to note that our prevailing guidance for those living in evacuation zones is to prepare ahead of time to stay with family or friends living outside of the zones. Evacuation centers are open for those without this option, but we strongly push people to a more comfortable and sustainable option, family, friends, or familiarity. Also, we note that this legislation is similar to Local Law 98 of 2013, which requires the city to provide homeowners and building owners with information on how to prepare buildings for weather emergencies, natural disasters, and power outages. In compliance with Local Law 98 of 2013, information has been on our website as well as HPD's website since 2013, updated as needed, and has been an ex excellent guide for building owners to use. We welcome the opportunity to meet with the council and other relevant city agencies involved to discuss how to best move forward to meet the goals of this legislation. Thank you for joining us in our mission to support the preparedness for all New Yorkers and for your time today, and I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I just want to note we're joined by Councilmember Cabrera uh, and Maisel. Uh, just a quick question about staffing. As part of the uh, five-year plan, um, what is the staffing changes you envision over that time? We really don't envision any staffing changes. I think the biggest challenge for us is that we would like to see um, the, 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 the agency, the staff and the agency begin become more involved and more engaged in moving forward, especially with us having identified where we want to be in five years. I don't anticipate any staffing changes. Is there still a plan to, uh, uh, is there still a thought that you're going to outgrow your, your current space within this time? Well, yes, we have outgrown our current space. Uh, we are working very closely with uh, OMB to figure out ways to, to, to make some changes there. Uh, have there been uh, sites identified? Will, will you, uh, are, are you going to stay at, uh, with the Cabin Plaza? We will stay at Cabin Plaza and hopefully enlarge, expand. Okay. Um, do you guys envision any new funding sources over the next five years, or will it be typically the same uh, federal grants? It's typically the same federal grants, yes. Are there any new opportunities for, for different well, types of grants? With, with this plan? Mm -hmm. No. We, we, the plan that we have right now, the, the resources that we require to implement the plan, we have the resources to do that. Things sound great at, at OEM. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna... Well, it's day by day. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be there on a bad day, by the, by the way. It's, uh, <laughs> it'll be a tough one. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions? Yes. Uh, Council Member Traeger. Thank you, Chair Borelli, and uh, I thank, thank you for your, for your testimony. Uh, in your testimony, you mentioned that New York City Emergency Management is not an oversight agency, but we're supportive of more information. Uh, the bill deals with amending the fire code. So that, can you explain to me why emergency management would be concerned with that? Well, 
we, 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 we support the intention of the legislation. We want to, further, well, to have further discussions with the council and with our partner agencies about what the right information to include would be and what the right distribution of the enforcement mechanisms would be. Right. Right. So again, just to be clear that this is the amending the fire code, we're not, I'm not sure if there's an emergency management code. Uh, so I, I do appreciate that distinction. Um, with regards to, um, yes, I, I've, as chair of the, f the former Hurricane Sandy Recovery Committee, I, I'm well aware about uh, emergency management's plans to prepare people far in advance. But I would say that we still have a long way to go in dealing with high-rise buildings and preparation and evacuation plans. Um, I know for a fact that New York City Emergency Management has made tweaks to the plan since Sandy. Um, there might be additional evacuation centers, backup centers. Um, this information, my concern, is just not filtering down to local communities, particularly the most vulnerable. Um, in high-rise buildings, they're required to post certain other critical information, elevator inspections, certain fire inspections. I think we're now at an age, particularly with the rising impact of climate change and the frequency of powerful storms, that we now have an obligation to post about evacuation centers in high-rise buildings. That's the era that we're in today. Um, so I... Just to be clear, is the administration supportive of this bill? Absolutely. We support giving more information to the public about evacuation preparedness, and we look forward to working with you and your staff and other city agencies. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Cabrera. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the Chair, and welcome. Uh, first, thank when you. I want to thank uh, OEM uh, for your work that you lend in Puerto Rico uh, for your all your efforts that were expended and invested in Puerto Rico I haven't been there three times uh, we needed definitely all the help we could get a uh, quick question are we helping out in other states right now I'm just yes. curious yes we are we the, the fire department New York City fire department deployed uh, yesterday or Saturday uh, members down what we call an incident management team, IMT, and they're going to be responsible for managing the different base camps that are being stood up in Florida. In addition to that, um, early, late last week, uh, uh, NYPD and one member from my office were deployed to attach to, uh, with the New Jersey Task Force, sending out a couple of canine dogs to help in that recovery effort. What are we learning from all the states that we can implement in New York City? What are we learning? Yes. That, uh, as the council member mentioned, uh, climate change is, is going to impact and make the storms that we're seeing coming out of the, uh, the, the coast of Africa much, much stronger. Uh, we're going to do a much, we have to do a much better job in, 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 in getting the public to, to uh, adhere to the word when the mayor says to evacuate. The biggest challenge for any emergency manager is complacency. Uh, when we're asking people to evacuate, the sun is shining. And it's very hard to convince someone that a hurricane is on the way when they're looking at 85 degrees and a beautiful day. At what category level are we talking about that we will ask people to evacuate? And I'm going to be more specific, uh, the city. Any, we have, there's four, uh, there's five. There's a cat one all the way to a category five. Right. And depending on the storm strength and the direction of the storm, that would depend on the evacuation zones that we're asking people to remove, to leave. So even a cat one, absolutely, you will ask people. For absolutely. example, let's, I'm in the Bronx, and we were the least affected by uh, Hurricane Sandy, particularly in my district. We're at the highest level. Welcome everyone to come to my district if you're <laughs> struggling in yours to the Promised Land. But uh, at what point, uh, even at one, uh, you will yes. ask people in the Bronx to leave the well, city? Well, it, again, it depends on on the direction of the storm. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem for a hurricane, people on the coast, is surge, as we saw what took place in, in, in Puerto Rico and what took place recently in, in the Florida Panhandle area. So if, if, you, if the mayor says it's time to evacuate, whether it's a Category 1 and, uh, or Category 5, you need to move. You need to move, and you need to either move to family and friends or you need to move to the closest evacuation center, and then you will either be, uh, will be transported to a, a shelter. How many days would it take to evacuate New York City in case of a 
a yeah, category. Worst case scenario. Well, worst case scenario. For, for us, nine, we usually begin pulling the trigger for hospitals and nursing homes uh, 78 hours. Uh, and then shortly after that, then we'll pull the trigger for evacuating the city, well, evacuating the zone, I should say. Okay. Thank you so much. And thank again, you. thank you for the fantastic you. work. You, you, you guys do you premier work, five star work. Thank you. Uh, to the thank you. Uh, any other questions? No? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. This concludes uh, today's hearing.